siku ya clinic clinic ya mfuko kuna zile zinataka drip kuna zingine zinataka kuwa admitted msijali tutasaidia kama kawaida we have our bench at the reception we are ready for you today we are going to be talking about self employment versus entrepreneurship trying to figure out which is which what's the difference between the two and many other things in between we get to hang out with the ceo and lead trainer at Centonomy Waidaka Gatumi how are you doing mzuri mzuri habari ya mwaka mpya mzuri it's good to be here by god's grace let me tell you that we are still here yes yeah awesome so if you are here we must be doing something you must be doing you something. have to do something important i'm telling mm-hmm. you so today i get to hang out with the ceo I, but you hang out with many of them. <laughs> this is your in fact that, in fact today I'm the one who's getting to hang out with Pasi. Pasi over here who speaks to the whole world and tells them the truth. I'm the one oh who's privileged. Oh my goodness, yes. my mm-hmm. friend, it's good mm-hmm. to have you. It's exactly. good to have you. Mm-hmm. Self-employment versus entrepreneurship. Yeah. Let's define these two terms because yep. f- to some of us they yep. seem like they're one and the same thing. They are similar. They're similar. They're similar. But they're not the same. But they're not the same. I'm able to explain here. So you see, first of all, thank you for having me, and it is truly a, a pleasure. Um, at Centronomy, our mission is to shift mindsets. Yes, that's what we are trying to do. And mm. and when you see when you see something in a new way, mm-hmm. it it uh, it uh, it helps you to make decisions that get you towards your goal. Right. So shift mindsets mm-hmm. so that as a purposeful person, you can create wealth and mm. live abundantly. That's our mission. Mm. That's what we're supposed to do. And one of the key ways that people generate wealth, mm-hmm. in fact, right now if I was to ask anybody who are the wealthiest people in the world, yes. they're going to name who, what, what type of people. Most of them are entrepreneurs. Yeah. Now, let's not talk about you know, heads of state and other <laughs> ones who may be. I'm not going to speak about that one. Now that one is, and even them you can say that in yeah. some way they're entrepreneurs. But I'm saying if you talk about the wealthiest men and mm. women in this world, yes. they are generally those who have started and built profitable businesses, mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Many of them, if you talk about them, they're not talking about one business. Yes. Okay. And that is one of the things that we begin to see. If somebody is running multiple businesses, yeah. that therefore means that business does not require them yes to function and to run and this might be one of the key differences between Mm self-employment and entrepreneurship okay if you are self-employed if you don't show up to work you don't make money (laughs) and the business does not make money either if you are an entrepreneur you're building a business Mm -hmm. that makes money Okay. Do you see there's a difference? Yeah. As a self-employed person, yeah. you make money through business. Through business. You are the one. Yeah. The business is you and you are the business. And even, I- yes, even if you have employees, mm-hmm. even if you have other people around you, if you don't show up to work, mm. the value of that business is in you, self-employed. Oh. An entrepreneur transfers value from mm. themselves into the business okay. so that the business itself is valuable in fact if you ask most of the people when you talk about the wealthiest people in the world you mm. I, how many are come on now that we have social media all of us are reading forbes yes rich, list of richest and people dreaming in the world. one day my you name will be here yes you're looking <laughs> at it when you look at their value why uh-huh. they're saying this person is worth two hundred billion i mean there's some numbers you can't even imagine yeah two hundred billion dollars this person that person does not have two hundred billion dollars in cash. Mm-hmm. What they own mm, is shares mm. in a company mm. that is valued at two hundred billion. Uh huh. But they own it. Yes. They are not the ones. They they obviously they have some input in it. Mm. They have the vision. They have all the different yeah. things. But the value in that business is not them. Mm. They have now managed to transfer it. How do I even, they can Mm. even sell that Mm. business to someone else. Yeah. So, maybe we give an example so that we can begin to see the difference. Mm -hmm. I'm a doctor. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to a clinic. And you go to a clinic, it's one of these high class clinics. Yes. You sit down. You look around, there's a receptionist who greeted you. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a nurse who's doing some work in that corner. There's mm-hmm. even a lab technician on yes. that other side. There's even a cleaner and somebody who comes and offers you tea. You're seated there. 
okay? Mm -hmm. They are all employees of this clinic. Yeah. But there is a whole group of you seated waiting. For the doctor. Because the value is in who? The doctor. If he does not or she does not show up, nothing happens in that place. You came to see who? The doctor. Came to see a doctor, not the cleaner, not the receptionist. So, yes. So, Dr. James, mm -hmm. if he doesn't show up, he, there is no value that is being generated. Mm -hmm. Self. Employed. Self employed. I think I've seen them interviewed here a couple of times yeah. because they are very powerful. I mean, they, are, they have had an impact on this nation. You mm. know, the Gikonyos, mm -hmm. Dr. Dan and, uh, yes. and uh, Mrs. Gikonyo, Do Mrs. Dr. Gikonyo as yes. well. They started off as normal doctors mm -hmm. and everything. But now, when you go to Karen Hospital, mm. Karen Hospital mm. you'll never see them. You'll not even meet them there. But who owns Karen Hospital? Mm -hmm. Gikonyos. Because when you go to Karen Hospital, wh what do you want? What do you want when you get to that place? You want to see what a doctor. A doctor. Sometimes you don't even know them by name. Yeah. You are learning their name when you're there. You yeah. are trusting that this person has been hired due to their qualifications and everything. Mm -hmm. You came into that place because you recognize mm -hmm. there is somebody who will assist me. They are they are certified wherever mm -hmm. they are. Whether the Gikonyo show up to Karen Hospital or not. Karen Hospital will produce we'll pro money and a profit for them. Very true. That is that is one of the key differences mm -hmm. between self-employment and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Self-employed, the value is where in, in you. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneur, you have transferred the value into this business mm -hmm. that can generate a profit over okay. time. Okay. So when we talk about self-employment, because yeah. uh, there's been a lot of conversations about mm -hmm. leaving work. <laughs> stepping away from employment yes. you know to start your own thing and yeah. sometimes I wonder when people make that decision do mm -hmm. they really understand what they're getting into because I think it's more responsibility <sighs> okay we are, we are coming to that let's yes. build because that one, is, <laughs> that one is a touch issue I want to first of all say to everybody mm -hmm. I am not trying to bring down or to belittle those who are working. Yeah. If you are busy producing value, even mm -hmm. if the value is in you, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say you're doing the wrong thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I encourage you. In fact, um, when, when we, we heard of the new administration, uh, President Ruto, and talking about this idea of hustlers and mm -hmm. that people are, he's trying to empower people to, to produce yes. and, to, and, to, yes. be, and to, to generate. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited because mm -hmm. there's something in that. Mm -hmm. But I believe that th we must take it from that to the next level. Yeah. I think this is a good starting point. Okay. And if you talk to most entrepreneurs, they started off as self-employed. Self That's, th you know, that you're trying to build value. Mm -hmm. And as you're building value, all the value is in you. Yeah. The process of entrepreneurship is transferring that value, mm. trying to continuously transfer. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah. Now, in response to your question, mm. <laughs> which was, do people understand what they're doing when they leave employment mm. to, to get into the business world, mm. what they're getting into? Mm. Many times, no. How do I know that mm. I am number one? Ah. <laughs> Tell us a story, my friend. No, I, I, no it's a fact. It's, it's a fact. Yes. I, I, I recognize that because I used to be here. Yes, used this, to be here. I used to work in this organization. And when I left, I went to do what? Business. Yes, business. Uh, but when I left, I became self-employed. Mm -hmm. Because, again, the value was in me. The, the company that I was running was a production company. Mm -hmm. And I, essentially, the vision, the idea, the... But the value was still in me. Who mm -hmm. was the one with the ideas? Who was the, the one with the concept? Who was driving the agenda? Yeah. It was me. It was you. And I never got to the point that our, uh, the wonderful founder of this organization, Leo, did. Leo used to be in your seat, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But he has now transferred so that he is, he is managing the organization mm -hmm. that is producing the value that was there. Mm -hmm. I never got to that point. Mm -hmm. When I was still the, I was the one who meet the client. Mm -hmm. You come on the day of production. You're the one who's helping the editing. You're, I was involved in every Everything, level, yeah. and I never managed to release mm -hmm. in order for that for the company to be able to grow. Is that is that is that transition of releasing mm -hmm. a hard thing that many people struggle with? Yes. Why? Because of multiple factors, including fear. Can we address that? Let's talk about first fear. of all fear. Yes. We've been training entrepreneurs now almost a decade. Mm -hmm. 
one of the things that entrepreneurs come into uh, our classes, the Centonomy Entrepreneur, yeah. with is they say, how can I get somebody who will work with me? Yeah. Okay. Work and I say, well, me. yeah. Mm. I don't trust these employees. Mm -hmm. Because if I show them, if I tell them what's going on, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? They're going to take my idea yeah, yes. and go and start their own <laughs> shop over there. Uh, That's what they're going to do. Across the, the street. <laughs> so here's, here's how we normally respond to that, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody who you have brought on board, mm -hmm. but you're not telling them the full story. You're not yeah. giving them the, the, the idea. You're, you are not empowering them. Because you're afraid. Because you're afraid. Mm. So who do you have working for you? an incompetent person. True. How can your business grow if you have somebody who is incompetent? And it's because you didn't train them and mm -hmm. give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to actually get to the place that they are. Yeah. Oh, but if I train them, I, I show them what's going on, they're just going to take my idea and go, and go, and go over there. Yeah. That, that they may do that. Mm -hmm. But while they are with you, if you have trained them and given them the opportunity yeah. that is there, yeah. then they will produce effectively while mm -hmm. they are with you. Mm -hmm. If you haven't, then you have an incompetent team. You're, they're even destroying where you are. Mm -hmm. And people remain at the level that they are because they are fearful. Fear is a big deal. Yeah. Letting go. Because people will come and go. And, and anyone who has led an organization will tell you, mm -hmm. what people will come and they will and go. They will go. Yeah. And if you're just trying to hold on to every single thing, mm. you can't be able to control and manage mm -hmm. that. So that's one of the things that is, when you said that l process of letting go is letting go of fear and saying, you know what, mm. if I'm going to be effective, mm -hmm. I need an effective team around me. Can I empower them to yeah. do what they're supposed to do? Yeah. If you ever want to read good books around this, a gentleman called Richard Branson, I yes. know... We, uh, uh, the, we, have n we don't have too many, uh, and I am encouraging Kenyan entrepreneurs, write books, write. Ra Tell yes. us the story of what you have done because yes. it empowers many of us. Very but true. you get those. And he talks about his team and he, ta he, tell he tells people, mm. train people well enough so they can live. Oh. But treat them well enough so they stay. So they stay. Many times Richard Branson, his top level management teams, he, he gives them shares in the company. So that they're not no longer working for him. No, they're, they're working, working for themselves. So as entrepreneurs, you have to be able to get to that point where you, you say, what, I'm going to find good people, get them involved, trust them in this period of time. If they leave, they leave. But while they're here with me, yes. they're going to be empowered and to be able to work. Because otherwise you cannot do everything. No, this is the statement you said there. <laughs> you know, train them well, well enough. Train them well enough. So that so they that can, they can leave, leave, but yes. treat them well enough so, so they want to stay. It's not my stay. I stole that from Richard Branson. Yes. <laughs> you know, you say that and I thought many times people do the opposite. Yes. You don't train them enough mm -hmm. and you don't, don't treat them well <laughs> enough. <laughs> you're just kind of balancing. Yes. You're, you're doing the bare minimum. Bare minimum. And that can't allow for growth. Uh -huh. An entrepreneur is able... What, the power of entrepreneurship is the power of Multiplication. Multiplication. Mm -hmm. That's where it is. So that if I have an effective team member, mm -hmm. they are producing whether I'm there or not. Yeah. Yeah. Get two of them, now three of us are producing. Mm -hmm. Four of us are producing. All they need is the opportunity. The opportunity. So the business is now going to grow not based on your capacity, mm -hmm. but based on the opportunity and the capital available in the market. That's entrepreneurship. I want to take you back a bit That's because okay. this is something that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Even with the example you've used of Daktari. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Daktari is a good doctor. Yes. Good doctor. Yeah. But just because he's a good doctor, mm -hmm. does that mean he can be a good entrepreneur or a good business owner? Because mm -hmm. it's something people have asked me. Yeah. People have asked me the question, hey, Pasima, by now you should be having your own station. <laughs> and I sit down and I think, do I want to deal with all that baggage? What am I really good at? Am I good at overseeing an organization or am I good at being in the studio <laughs> and doing my thing? Yeah. Because sometimes I've seen people who, because you're good at your thing, mm -hmm. you think now you can actually go out and set something, but then you fall flat on your face. What can you tell us about that? Okay. So, 100% agree with you. Mm -hmm. Not everyone was meant to be an entrepreneur or in business. Yes. Let's just admit. Yeah. And you... 
It, this is the one weakness I told you of this discussion about a hustler nation. We can't all be hustlers. We can't. Somebody, if you're in business, you yeah. also need employees. You need employees, yeah. You do, because yeah. otherwise the function is not going to yeah. be there. So at the moment, yes, m many people are, are trying to get to that mm -hmm. level, but we need more and more to break out of that system mm -hmm. to become entrepreneurs and, uh, and employ others. Who okay. are them. Should everybody be an, uh, an entrepreneur or in business? No. I think you... Many of us should be comfortable being employees. See, in this room, all of us are employees. Please, yes. yes. Yeah. That's it. So you have linked yourself to the vision of mm -hmm. somebody else who has built. And you can build together yeah. as, as you go al along. And when they're saying this, you know, let's be very clear. Mm -hmm. I did not say that if you're self-employed, you cannot make money. No, you didn't say that. In fact, you can make a lot of money. Of money. Yes. All right? Yeah. But what difference you have to understand is you are an employee. Just you are employed by yourself. Self. Yeah. And so your attitude as somebody who is self-employed is one of an employee, mm -hmm. which is, if I'm making this money, I better be investing elsewhere. Oh. Just like an employee. Okay. You and okay. I, okay. we get our salary. Yeah. When we receive our salary, yeah. we use that salary to build ourselves. Yes. That's the income that we're using to invest in the home that we want to have, uh -huh. in the retirement fund that we're trying to build, in the growth investments that we're trying to do, we yeah. use the same thing. So if you're self-employed and you said, this is my thing, I have no interest. That doctor, I'm not saying every doctor has to open a hospital. Mm -hmm. But you have to recognize, and this is, I'm trying to break that myth because there are some doctors who are running a clinic and they are the value and they think I own a business. Mm. They think I'm, 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 I'm growing and their attitude is this business will continue to pay me. It will not if you are not there. If you're not there. And so if you're going to stay self-employed, you can make a lot of money, but make sure that as you're making that cash, you're investing elsewhere, elsewhere. because those investments are the ones that are going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. All right. That's so cool. those who, has, who cool. have decided for themselves, yeah. that's the space. Because I told you, not everybody is going to be an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Yeah. But if your goal and your ambition is to be an entrepreneur, mm. then you must begin to do that release so that the company is the one that is, is de developing that value. Mm -hmm. You know, just before we came on, I was telling you, I was looking for that uh, article and I found it. Because I, yeah. hear, I hear many people uh, in Kenya saying there's no money. Yeah. There's no, invest, there's yes, no money for investment. Yeah. Where are the investors in this country? Mm. 2021, 2022, hard years, COVID years, yes. that people were talking about. Yeah. And we're seeing that that is it. Over 25 billion shillings was invested into a seed capital into companies in Kenya. Okay. 25 billion, billion shillings. Yeah. Hustler fund is how much? 50. Half of that, Half of that. went into just a couple of businesses. Mm -hmm. Why? Because those businesses were ready to absorb that, that cash. Uh -huh. That cash as an investor, an investor is looking for a business in which the model works. Mm -hmm. if, if I put my money in, what will this do? It will allow the business to scale, to scale. and I will get a return. Yeah. Please understand, investors are not foolish. In fact, investors are wise. Mm -hmm. How did they get the money that they have to invest? Because they are not just putting their money into holes yes. in the ground. They have worked hard yes. to have that cash. And wherever they put it, they are looking for a return. Mm -hmm. And in a self you, you're, you're wondering, why, is that, why aren't people willing to put money into my business? Because an investor will look at your, your numbers on the, on the piece of paper in mm. front of them. They look at your structure. They listen to what you're saying, and they'll be very quick to say, I can't scale this up. Mm -hmm. If I put this money here, you are the greatest ri risk factor. Yes. Because if you, they're looking and saying, if you drop dead, or if you disappear and you said, I'm going to uh, the, the beach <laughs> to go and, and enjoy myself for a couple of weeks, all my money is in, in you, I have lost everything. They are not <laughs> foolish. Investors are not foolish. Yes. They are looking for businesses that yes. can actually absorb and scale and mm. give them a return. Okay. It is self-employment versus entrepreneurship, and we're hanging out with the CEO and lead trainer of Syntonomy. This is Waidaka Gatumia. I was asking you a question as we were listening to that beautiful mm -hmm. song. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when it comes to self-employed people, yeah. one of the things sometimes you said you hear a lot is, but no one can do it like me, especially yeah. if your business is skill-based. Mm -hmm. How does one break free from that? <laughs> 
Uh, I think because you believe that you are the one who can bring out the quality the way it's supposed to be brought out. Correct. Yeah. Um, maybe okay. There's truth in it, mm -hmm. but there's also something else we need to deal with. I think it was you were having that discussion on principles before I came. Yes. In. Uh, I think one of the 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 best Christian principles is this one called humility. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and no one can do it like we. <laughs> yes. So so yes, there is a gift that you have that probably somebody else does not have. Mm -hmm. But here's the difference, and here's what we must begin to recognize. Mm. Uh, they can't do it until you train them. Mm -hmm. So in the Centonomy Entrepreneur, one of the, one of the key lessons that you go through yeah. in structuring your business mm. is, a, is, a, is an idea called uh, process mapping. Okay. Process mapping. Yeah. So you hire for competence. So obviously, if, it's, if, it, if it requires a certain skill, mm. Hire somebody with that skill set, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. for sure. But also, we have to move to the next level and train. And train, yeah. So many times it's consultants. I have, uh, we've dealt with consultants. Ah, they can't put the presentation together the way I like to put. They yes. don't treat the client the way yes. I want the client to be treated. They don't present themselves the way mm -hmm. I want them to. These people, when I hire them, they don't do the things the way I want them to do. Train the person. Mm. Show up and show them. In fact, um, my my there's a relative of mine, a mm -hmm. lady called Christine, and she uh, she passed away a couple of years ago. Oh. And during her funeral, there was a testimony that I've never heard before. Mm -hmm. A young man came up, and, mm -hmm. and you know he was not even related to the family mm -hmm. or anything. I think she had met him and was mentoring him through where, through the employment space. Mm -hmm. And it shocked me because I'd never heard this about. Uh, she was my sister-in-law's sister who passed mm -hmm. away. And Christine, when the young man was speaking, and he, he changed my perspective completely. Mm. Because he said, what Christine did for me, she would call me randomly in the middle of the week and mm. say, hey, what are you doing? Nothing. Get up, get dressed, come to town. No, nothing else than that. Mm -hmm. Christine would take this young man into her business meeting. She's an employee. Mm? She would take this young man into her business. She's going to look for work. Mm -hmm. And she would say, sit, take notes, be quiet. Wow. What she was doing was showing him, mm -hmm. this is how it's done. Don't, mm. You're not participating, you're watching. You're watching and taking notes. In your business, when you bring somebody on board, mm -hmm. the first thing you do is train them. Mm -hmm. There's a writer called Jack Welsh. He was mm -hmm. the CEO of... Um, General, General Electric, isn't it? Yes. He's written a book called Winning. He's talked a lot about management. Yeah. And he says, training is where the difference is. Because when that person is trained, immediately they come in, they become effective. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that your systems are perfect? No. But immediately they know what to do. They get yeah. into a system and they can work. Yeah. If they're a good employee, first of all, they'll begin to produce with the system you have. Mm -hmm. If they're an excellent employee, they begin to augment the system that you have in mm -hmm. place. What is that augmentation doing? It's making the system better. better. They came in and said, oh, this is how you do it. Okay, I'm doing it. As I'm doing it, I'm saying, oh, this is mm. not working the way I should. Can we try and do it this way? Yeah. But they had already started producing at that point. Mm -hmm. Can somebody else do it like you? Probably not. Can they do it better than you? Probably, Probably yes. If you only give them a chance. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things uh, um, I, I thank God for the founder of St. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because when she brought me on board, mm -hmm. I've worked for other organizations before. Mm -hmm. And other organizations, you never get the freedom she would be the one seated here speaking mm -hmm. to, you, to mm -hmm. you and everybody else. Yeah. And for, I, for many years, she was the one doing this. Yes. But more and more, she has brought that culture that has allowed others to come and mm -hmm. to take that position. In fact, right now, many people think, uh, it's autonomy your business. Imagine yeah. it is not mine. Yeah. Somebody else started this business. Yes. But because of, their, her, of her lack of fear, mm -hmm. she would bring me for these interviews. She mm -hmm. would show me how it is. I'm the, uh, one of the trainers, and we are doing the same with the rest. We have other members of the team now who are doing this same thing. Yeah. Why is that? Because right now, Maidaka can be here at, at family telling people about uh, entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. While we have our, our, my dear brother, Michael, yes. who is at KU TV, yes. who is talking to youth at this point and saying, can Maidaka do both? Can Washeke do both? No. No. This is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So when you're fearful like that, 
and you are unable to release and to train, mm -hmm. then you're going to find a person can only do it the way that you want them to do it if you show, if you them. show them. So a big part of onboarding people, especially as an entrepreneur, mm. is training. And people fear that. I told you it's the fear that we talked about yeah. at the beginning because the fear is I'm training this person, now they'll go and take yeah. it. That also may reveal some mm -hmm. weaknesses within the business. It means that your business then had not yet buffered itself against potential competition. Ooh. In fact, as you say mm -hmm. that, I'm, I'm just looking at this message from Joyce in Uganda. Uh -huh. Joyce is saying, good morning, Pastor. In the western part of UG, it's hard for entrepreneurs to impart knowledge mm -hmm. or treat employees well because mm -hmm. when they eventually leave, they always set their business mm -hmm. next to the former employer. Mm -hmm. It's a very common occurrence and nobody will train you well. Yeah. But it's time that we begin to see there are those who have broken through. Look in any industry. Mm -hmm. There are those who have broken through. Mm -hmm. And they did so by the process of continuously letting go mm -hmm. and empowering others within their team. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a fact. There is no other way. You cannot be in 10 places at the same time, yeah. and you cannot have every single skill in the world. You can't. You can't. You can't. And so the power of entrepreneurship is that multiplication factor. Mm -hmm. When you hear of organizations that have 100,000 employees, what, can you imagine the multiplication factor I'm that is happening you. in that same space? Unbelievable. That's it. But it starts by recognizing mm. what is the opportunity that is out there. When you recognize, you find it. So with what we are talking about, is it then important at the get-go, mm -hmm. when you are setting up this business, to decide whether you just want to be self-employed and you're content with that, or whether you want to be an entrepreneur? Yep. I love that you use that word, mm. decide. It's a decision. It's a decision. And the decisions that we make mm -hmm. affect the future outcomes that are, that are possible to us. Mm -hmm. And the decisions will reveal the possibilities that we go through. Okay. That, now, if you talk to most entrepreneurs who have been in business, mm -hmm. it is very few of them that this was the first thing. The one that worked was the first was thing the they first ever thing tried. They ever, yes. Very, Very few of them. Very true. At, at, you, at you suddenly woke up, you came up with the idea, and it blew up and everything. Most of them will tell you, and even if it's not a formal thing, they'll tell you, when I was in school, mm -hmm. I, I, I used to sell biscuits yes. to my fellow <laughs> boarders. When I was, you know, when I was in university, I used to yes. do this. We had, uh, we had uh, an event last weekend for entrepreneurs, and we had uh, a gentleman called Eugene Bogo. He's a, he's a entrep local mm -hmm. entrepreneur here. And he, and he was telling us his story. Mm -hmm. The number of businesses he had done before he started business was, I mean, amazing. Mm -hmm. He started off by training. When he was in university, he said, mm -hmm. ah, I have time, I have skill. So he started doing, um, essentially, what, what do you call it? Tuition, essentially, yes. for people who are around. Yes. Because, yeah, so that was his fact. And he would make money from mm -hmm. that. Then he said, now, okay, my parents have give, bought me a, 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 um, a laptop. What can I do with this? So he started burning DVDs and things like yes. now. Now, uh, you know, the, you can talk now about the the ethics around <laughs> that or not. But he was a college student. Yes. He was looking for a way to raise, to capital, raise capital to build the business that uh -huh. he was. And he was saying, what, you know what, I get DVDs, I'm doing this. He's not unlike our dear friend, Mr. Trevor Noah of South Africa. I don't yeah. know if you've read his books. You've read, have you read no, his book? I haven't read Please his read his book. Read his book. Let yes. me spoil spoilers for those who are listening. Yes. Uh, Trevor Noah, it was exactly the same thing. Him, ah. it was CDs. Uh -huh. And he, he, you know, CDs were not available that time. Yeah. Was, uh, somebody, I can't remember who bought his mom or some bought him a uh, computer. And it was not even a laptop those days. You know, it was those tower those block. Tower blo yes. <laughs> he used to carry that and the screen uh -huh. to his friend's place, set it up. They sit, burn DVDs while they are, did, you know, DJing and doing yes. all these other things. These are all steps in that entrepreneurship journey. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to learn is that you will not hit success immediately. Yes. But if you, if you have a picture of what are, are financially free and, uh, and an effective, profitable business looks like, mm -hmm. Then even as you're self-employed, because all of them, that's where they're starting. You, you most you started yeah. as self-employed. Yeah. Most started as self-employed. Yeah. Then you're building sufficient capital. You are saving, just the same way we were talking about before, mm -hmm. putting aside the money that mm -hmm. will allow you to start now the profitable business mm -hmm. that does not require you. Mm -hmm. That's where the work now begins. Okay. So if we can begin to get to that mindset mm -hmm. of what a business actually looks like, yeah. then you're able to grow towards it. There are those, though, who are, who are in, even in our culture here, 
but most, more so in the West, and especially mm. in the U.S. Mm. The U.S. has a, I, an entrenched entrepreneurship culture. Yeah. Okay? And they have systems to fund that you cannot believe. I mean, like, mm. in fact, when we talk about these 25 billion shillings yeah. that was invested, yeah, a lot of it comes from outside. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they have the structures to fund because they recognize if we catch an idea mm -hmm. early enough, yeah. it can blow up mm. and it can become a global business. So they literally are looking out. Even That's why they are willing to fund even college students who, who have not mm. even finished university. Why? Because they're saying if we catch the idea early. at the right moment, mm. which is before everybody else, it, you have that beginner's advantage and you can grow. Yeah. So what happens is in a culture like that, and we are beginning to get to that space, mm -hmm. even a simple idea, if the idea has been planned well enough mm -hmm. and you can be able to show the pot potential profitability that's coming up, mm -hmm. we, have, we are beginning to see even startups that have not done anything yeah. are getting funded. Why? Yeah. Because a structure is in place mm. in advance. So you don't have to go through the whole self-employed yes. en environment. However, most of the time, it requires some skin in the game. Some of your investment, maybe from your employment, mm. maybe you have your family money and you put into that, but it, that people are going to fund it based on the idea and the structure that is going to br bring the, the outcome that you're looking for. Okay. Mm. You know, one of the things I've always wondered sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, even as we finish, when I watch some of these business shows, yeah. especially from out there, mm -hmm. is, is, is what you're talking about, the mindset. Mm -hmm. Somebody's starting a business, but mm -hmm. they're thinking of scaling this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I find that on this end of the globe, mm -hmm. uh, we usually think small. Mm -hmm. If I have my stall, I'm selling my clothes, I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. I have a profitable business, that's it. How do we change that mindset? Because I believe we have so many great ideas in this country, <laughs> you know, but it's like they never, there's a ceiling they never, they never surpass. That's right. Um... You cannot achieve what you can. You have never seen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there's there's a lot of um, examples of this. I think uh, Steve Harvey has an example of this. The fleas, if you put them into a, they can jump like yes. thirty centimeters, a foot up in the ground, yeah, off the ground, off the table, and if you put them in a box that is half that mm -hmm. size for long enough, even if you open it after that, they have learned that this is the limit is the of limit. what you're going to do. Yeah. And so what we're trying to do as Centonomy is mm -hmm. to lift that limit mm -hmm. and to show people this is how businesses can actually work. Mm -hmm. This is how your investment strategy can actually work. Yeah. Um, if we can begin to see businesses a lot better to act, let me tell you, this is something I am learning. Mm -hmm. And as I learn, we are, we are trying to get this out to entrepreneurs as much as possible so that they can, they can see the potential of their business. Okay. If you can see it, then you can make a plan and say, mm -hmm. guess what? Somebody else has done it. That's what we talk about, a culture of entrepreneurship. Yeah. So at a culture, when you see Americans, especially, and I, I know you talk about Americans a lot, but even locally you begin to see it. I thank God for people like Esther Mushemi who have written a book about, you know, give me my mountain. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen that mm -hmm. book that she's written mm -hmm. about even how she grew the, the, the group yeah. of, of companies that she has done. More and more entrepreneurs, write your books. Mm -hmm. Tell your stories on places like this, because what happens is you're opening the eyes ah. of somebody else to be able to see. To see it's possible. And then places like, uh, uh, and this I told you it's our mission to mm. shift mindsets yes. at Centonomy. And so through our classes at Centonomy, we are trying to show people, imagine your business could be somewhere mm -hmm. else. Um, and, and one of the main ways that we do it, especially at the beginning of the year, that's why I'm here, mm. is we have an open day mm -hmm. this coming Saturday. Mm. 21st will be at All Saints Cathedral. It is free. Mm. Show up. Because we will be doing this. The theme is define, refine, and plan mm. to achieve your financial goals. You achieve them through the employment that you have or you achieve them through the business, the business. that you have. Mm. And when you begin to see you see, I, when I come to a station like this, I can't come with my laptop, my, yes. my you know, pad and everything. I have yes. a few minutes to be able to show. When you come into a room like that mm. and you begin to see, oh, you mean this is how I can scale up my smoky mm -hmm. business? You mean, oh, you mean I can't scale this? Because one of the be best le lessons to learn mm. is that I'm going the wrong direction. Yeah. This thing cannot become cannot. The, my dream. Mm. If I can see that, then it's going to shift the way that we think. Mm -hmm. 
So how can we, you ask me, how can we change that culture yeah. like this? Like this. Having conversations mm -hmm. like this, mm -hmm. giving as many examples, getting entrepreneurs to share their stories like yes. the ones that I was saying. Yes. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, take that time. I know you've listened to here. Go and listen to other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Sit down with other people who yes. are in the room. Go on, on to social media. And actually, instead of listening to all those jokes the yeah. whole time, because people spend a lot yeah. of time listening to jokes, Listen to and get to a page of somebody you respect. Yes. Listen to their story. Pay attention. Take notes. Yeah. Um, it's a really powerful tool. Wow. Mm -hmm. Imagine our time is up. What? No. We, yeah. we, have, we have barely even gotten <laughs> started. <laughs> our time is up. We have not even described My profitability in a business, which, oh, we, which is a different That's thing. why you need to come back. I'll come. That's why you need to come I'm back coming. so that we can do a part two of this. But thank you so much yeah. for coming. Yeah. And thank you for the work you guys are doing. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Karibu. Asante. Our time is up. I hope this conversation has opened some, what do you call it? Lit some bulb lights <laughs> in your mind about entrepreneurship and about self-employment. Until next week, have yourselves a good day. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can get notified whenever we upload new fresh content every day. Stay tuned and enjoy fresh uplifting content. <laughs>